uh, good evening everyone uh, 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 thank you for being part of this uh, panel discussion on a monday evening i mean if it was a typical work day we would all be in offices attending meetings with our bosses uh, rajiv has been uh, to his office and it's, he just managed to get back uh, uh, to his work from home mode in time to be part of this webinar uh, as you know we have a you know discussion lined up about the uh, free to air uh, channels ecosystem uh, uh, during the next uh, one hour or so before i start i'll just uh, do a brief introduction of all our panelists my name is nawal ahuja i am one of the founders of exchange for media <clears throat> on the panel uh, today with us are hema malik she is the ceo of lodestar uh, media hema has been uh, uh a uh, part of uh, lodsar for many years and over her career spanning 22 years she has handled many clients across categories the likes of coke mastercard whirlpool hcl metlife uh so she brings the perspective of a large uh, media agency ecosystem to the table uh, thank you hema for being part of this jayalala as many of you know has done many of tours in his uh, professional career last he was with uh, group m for uh, long period of time and he's now been part of publicy for what two years now jay uh and uh, uh obviously covid has kind of grounded him uh he spends a lot of time between delhi and bombay right now he's with family in bombay uh and working harder from home as he says than he was uh, ever in his life so thank you jay uh for thanks, being thanks. Part of this. Thanks, mohit joshi the the perennial sunset chaser is uh being chased by the sun at home now uh, uh he's as we all know the md of avas uh, media group uh, and uh, has many years of uh, experience across strategic planning aor management and buying functions uh, under his belt uh he's worked on you know again marquee clients the likes of pepsi dabur hero honda nestle rocket ben kaiser and hyundai thank you good to see you mohit again and hope to meet you in person very very soon thanks uh, rajiv as i said has just managed to manage to make it home uh, uh you, some of you might have read uh, uh dabur has started manufacturing across all their plants from 4th of may aaj 8th of may uh so that's very good news Fifth for time. people who keep asking when is economic activity going to start it's not a black and white answer it will gradually start coming back online but uh, dabur uh, which is one of the largest fmcg indian born uh, largest fmcg uh, companies in india uh, having started production across all their plants is you know certainly fantastic and encouraging news for all of us so thank you rajiv for coming back home early for us today k shrinivas rao uh, national director of buying media com is also with us part of the wpp group as you all know uh, again has worked uh, 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 across a uh, large number of uh, brands uh, uh, across industries has over 25 years of uh, experience thank you thank you shrini for being part of this uh, and last but not the least sandeep gupta the ceo of broadcast business from shimaru sandeep has been instrumental in shimaru's entry into the broadcast business uh, and before joining uh, shimaru sandeep has been the india cfo and ceo of b4u television network thank you sandeep so uh, good to have you thank guys you so all uh, on this uh, uh, so what we'll do is we will uh, you know over the course of the next one hour we will try and uh, uh, channel this conversation into two larger uh, uh, two large buckets so the first bucket obviously is questions that everybody wants answers today to as to what is happening uh, you know when it comes to the advertising media ecosystem our marketing budgets going to come back how soon are we uh, going to see them coming back what is going to be the severity of you know uh, the impact of covid on marketing advertising budgets which industries will get impacted more which will get impacted less and the second part of our conversation will revolve around uh, what happens to the fta ecosystem in light of uh, partly what's happening with covid and otherwise the larger broader trends in the media and the advertising sector so my first question uh, uh, and this question i'm sure you've been asked multiple times i start with hema hema you i'm sure you've been talking to many clients across uh, uh, the width of uh, industries that lodestar manages what's your sense if you could give us three crisp points of you know what is the thinking of uh, your clients uh, we are now two month into roughly two months into the lockdown so, in this entire covid thing so what's what's the sense you get in terms of where things are headed what shall we expect over the say next 40 45 days so uh, uh, navel uh, i think can you hear me i audible and yes. clear yes very much 
yeah so i think uh, i think for any question that you asked today i think uh, the first answer is going to be very very uncertain uh, because we actually don't know how long will this last when will get things back to normal what is the new normal so we all are making guesstimates from the trends that we have seen our own recent past as well as what is happening in other markets and who are overcoming this who are in a stage which is ahead of us or in a stage which is behind us and therefore you know are the trends similar so it's very difficult to say but yeah every client every category we work across different categories whether it is auto whether it is uh, financial categories or consumer packaged goods so every category has its own nuances and uh, they have now started to you know work and action towards that so ecom conversations are i think the primary conversations that are happening uh, across many of our clients especially durables you know uh, what is expected is a lot of consumer durables while we say that the sentiment is going to be low but uh, household goods because people have spent a lot of time at home and they have realized the importance of you know having the comfort of the home so from kitchen appliances to durables to uh, you know uh, television screens because that is becoming pretty much the world for them for so many times and you know they are just preparing themselves for all the uncertainties that they will see in the coming future so that is something which we expect a boom and that's where uh, our clients like samsung or whirlpool are uh, talking ecom uh, tie ups uh, in a big way uh, if you look at uh, categories like auto and after like a historical april where not even a single car was sold in the country uh, uh, bmw for example i mean they ran a camp campaign where they encouraged a contactless uh, online car sales and that's becoming the new normal for them so that's a different thing if you look at other categories which are online payment or online education they have a different way of i mean that's that's there those are the categories which are positively impacted so they are working uh, uh, the things are working in their favor they this is the time for them to make money this is the time for them to uh, establish brand establish their own credentials while there are a lot of them are new players in the category so every category has uh, its own nuances and its own uh, way of dealing with the situation so it's tough to say when things will come back to normal but we all know that it is temporary however what is what lies ahead of us is not the what we have left behind it is going to be a new normal that we will set across different categories but mohit what 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 are your three three takeaways if you can crisply tell us uh, so a uh, client as, as as emma said completely uncertain times no client currently knows when things will uh, get back to normal but when i talk to clients there are essentially two kind of uh, uh, trends that i see there are one set of people who are you know raring to go who are saying that uh, yes the moment there is some relaxation some markets start opening up we are ready with our campaign what kind of categories would those scenarios be? built so i'll be uh, you know i'll be honest even a hyundai and a kia are uh, are ready to go because they are saying that you know for us uh, specific uh, brands uh, are are there in the market and there is a possible there is a very big possibility of the demand picking up at the same time you have a lot of other clients who fall in the cautious uh, domain because uh, see historically whatever what has happened is whenever there has been an impact and and uh, slump the advertising slump is always much larger than the marketing slump right or the economic slump so we have already gone into a slump and which is where uh, while on one hand uh, there is a need to advertise and every marketer currently feels that there is a need to advertise on the other hand from a pnl all the pnl uh, holders who are sitting over here will know that there is a huge pressure on costs as well and the first cost that goes out whenever there is a pressure is the advertising and research cost so one has to to manage these two extreme ends very very carefully to advertise at the same time be be very clear of how you man, manage costs so you know it's going to be interesting uh, uh, going forward but as i said uh, uh, i would say about 40% of the clients seem to be in the in the raring to go domain and about 60% of the cautious domain Okay, that's. I think that's a very uh, quantifiable kind of yeah. story shared. So good. Let's uh, now go to Srini. Srini, uh, what about MediaCom? What are your clients saying? Uh, so again, uh, I echo the thoughts of Hema and Mojo in terms of uncertainty being the key word. But at the same time, there are certain categories which are looking at uh, this as an opportunity as well. Uh, like for example, handset and all the tech brands like Dell and Vivo. who have a pent up demand and they have their 
entire e-commerce delivery piece sorted. Yeah. For them, it's a good opportunity, yeah. and they might just start off uh, advertising right away. That's uh, right. In fact, while we speak, there is a campaign which they are in which way is planning to do. So obviously. Uh, on one side is these brands which are looking at as an opportunity at the same time on the other hand you have uh, other brands and categories which are being a little cautious as well and for them again the way to look at it is building scenarios as to how exactly the uh, the, the way it's going to pan out going forward once the lockdown gets over so tell me have uh, a large number of uh, clients uh, Rajiv, perhaps you can uh, answer the question. Uh, uh, we are sitting in uh, end of May, almost in the end of May, and two months of this financial year is over. And you know, looks like this quarter we can keep aside. If we were to look at say the three quarters, Q2, Q3, and Q4, have you guys sat down already and said, okay, for this year, if I had spent hundred rupees last year, this is roughly my allocation for this year, whether that's eighty bucks or ninety bucks or whatever it, what, whatever that is. Have you done those conversations already or you are still uh, figuring out how long will the lockdown last and then we'll sit down and, you know, figure out those conversations. So, you know, uh, hi everyone. Uh, hi Naval. Actually, you know, it, it works in a very different way in uh, companies like ours, you know. Uh, so, I think the only one thing uh, uh, we are planning or say are companies like ours, we are planning is how to sustain ourselves in these uh, tough times and stay afloat and how to manage costs, how to manage uh, sales, how to manage business, how to ensure that there's no loss of uh, livelihood for people. So these are the first priorities, you know. Uh, as far as spending money is, is concerned, this is like uh, really uh, not the priority right now, uh, the top priority right now. So what is uh, the, the most important thing right now going on in our minds is uh, how to protect business, how to ensure that, you know, uh, we can stay afloat uh, in these times. So uh, the only one thing is there that you know you are doing everything on it. Uh, so you're looking at each day at, uh, at the time, and uh, every day is different. Every every day things are changing very quickly, hmm. and uh, so that's how it's going. Uh, so one is uh, really looking at uh, the next three quarters, including the current quarter, hoping that uh, things improve in the next month, one month, and uh, things come back to normal, and uh, we stay afloat. Uh, so that's what uh, one is trying to do. And then, you know, uh, uh, as far as spends in etc. that's like really secondary right now. It's not really on a forefront. First thing is to protect business, protect uh, livelihood of people, protect uh, your turf and, and stuff like that. And FMCG companies are, uh, you know, the category is uh, perhaps expected to be lesser impacted as compared to say an auto or some of the other industries. Yeah, because some of the uh, things that you make are kind of quasi essential one can say that's right so as compared to automobiles definitely i mean uh, imagine a scenario uh, like you know month of april not a single car sold uh, to something like our business where you know we had uh, uh, factories running but not 200 percent capacity last month so we did have uh, uh, some sales last month as compared to that uh, these companies are like they are better than them but uh, so in this scenario also the companies which are food companies like Nestle and stuff, uh, or say companies like Rackets who have uh, uh, products like Dettol and all, they have done uh, very phenomenal, phenomenal sure, yeah, of course. times. Uh, but within FMCG also there are some essential, there are some not so essential work products. Right. So essential products uh, like toothpaste and, and food products like, like Maggie or say sanitization products. These products have done very well. Uh, they'll continue to do well in uh, next uh, whole of the year. But some of the products which are like hair color, you know, or say these kind of products have uh, really not done well. You know? And it's also a function of all the distribution disruption and logistics. Even if you have the products, if people want to buy it, there's no way you can reach the products to the consumer because... Yeah, so supply chain was very severely affected in the month of March and April. Uh, it started coming back gradually and uh, now things are getting back to... Uh, not no, I wouldn't say normal because you know lots of states uh, still have mm -hmm. uh, uh, a very strict uh, lockdown, like uh, state of Maharashtra and especially cities of Bombay, Pune, Ahmedabad. Uh, but in other cities, things are likely to come back to normal uh, very soon in this uh, lockdown 4.0. So I think as the uh, supply chain eases out, as uh, uh, 
uh, the factories become operational as uh, uh, things become normal i think the first priority will be to get the business on track and then you know one can talk about uh, spending money in the next quarters correct absolutely so jay what's your take what's the conversations you had with you know some of the, your clients because you you manage a very wide uh, portfolio of uh, brands so, uh, so now uh, echo quite a lot of uh, thoughts which which everybody on the panel has been discussing uh, it's 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 a challenging time for a lot of clients but uh, it's 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 uh, if if i were to break it down uh, it's largely i could put it into two buckets there is certain set of clients which which like raji was speaking are the essential list uh they are having a different kind of challenge how do they meet up to the demand so like things like maggi parle ji coffee they they are in a space where the demand is 200 and the production capacity is around 50 so uh, they are trying to see how can they meet up at least up to 70 80 or something like that that is one part of the story and they believe that this is going to continue even after the lockdown so this is not a temporary phase they believe that it is going to be a habit change people are going to consume uh, more of these uh, products and therefore uh, they are in a situation where they are saying that how do we plan for this excess demand and therefore uh, match it up with excess marketing uh, that's that's one set of clients the other set of clients uh, are are clients which are facing a big challenge like say hero uh, alcohol clients like beam uh, they they are seeing a situation like like the alcohol category is seeing a situation where they are saying they are approximately 3 years behind and yeah. it's it's not going to like you know really ramp up so first of all uh, it's not one size fits all there are certain clients there is a different solution there is a certain clients there is a different solution also in terms of forecasting the way we try to look at it is it's short medium and long term i think industry at large believes that from september onwards things will be back to normal as in we'll be at you know 100% of what we were at last year if there is growth might be a challenge but you might come back to 100 or at least 90% of levels the challenge is uh, for the medium and the short term immediate and what is going to happen in the next 2 to 3 months how agile we are you know because you 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 need to think on your feet how can you do something which is which is extremely quick and and fast up and i think that's the order of the day i think everybody is just trying to say what i could have done in one week can i do it in one day and and that's what is actually keeping all of us busy so you know can we keep coming up with solutions for clients you know where where we could help them either it is a category a client or a category b client can and we give them some sort of a solution which can help them uh, manage their expectations so it's it's it is an ambiguous situation but, uh, but that's what we are i at think for. good points uh, net net what you're saying is there are categories where business is actually uh, stayed stable or you know grown and those companies are you know the chances of them starting to spend advertising dollars the moment uh you know things start opening up are significantly higher obviously there are other categories like alcohol which are significantly impacted but we know there again the moment it opens up you know consumption will come back so it's not like a you know a very long drawn slow process of consumption coming back obviously how soon uh, do marketing advertising budget comes uh, come back on which the livelihood of advertising agencies and media companies is dependent will uh, determine uh, how we go because you know as you as we have all seen Uh, uh the disruption that is caused at, at the client's a- end has impacted the advertising and the media ecosystem significantly i'll come to you sandeep now because you know you you be you are on the you know media side of the business and uh, you know at a time when uh, uh, revenues ad revenues have dried up significantly and as i was mentioning uh, just around the time this conversation we started having this conversation some of the fta channels uh, have actually pulled out uh, from dd free dish because they are not in a position to pay, pay their minimum guarantees and uh, you know there's no ad sure. revenue to support that you guys have launched at a time like this one can understand that you know you have to look at a business model for 3 years and not go quarter by quarter but how do you you know uh, uh, sustain at a time like this and what kind of forecasting do you do i mean when because costs are a reality costs are a kind of in some way permanent i mean your your bills will have to be paid every month they might not be any revenue 
True, true, Naval. Uh, times uh, from the time that we were planning and the time that we are in right now has significantly changed. Uh, when we launched Marathi, uh, things were different, and just because we, before we thought that okay, it's good time to ask the advertisers that you will get good good share of viewership. Uh, COVID started happening. GC is something that we had contemplated. We were working sincerely on it. And we had to launch. We had nothing else than to launch because we thought that this is the best time when we can immediately catch the eyeballs, right? Because everybody was at home. So the, the spending that one may have to do to catch the eyeballs may get reduced because at this point of time, the new normal, how to even, even for, even for marketing, like even for marketing, how do we reach out to the customers to be being discovered? was a different phenomenon right now. It's what we might have thought, how we would get discovered two months back and what we plan now is absolutely different, right? So we, we were on the piece of planning quite some, for quite some time. And the, the difficult aspect of it was putting everything together to launch within the period of COVID. That really was very difficult because the first priority was to ensure that the human resource is protected. Yeah, we're at, this, at this time, ensuring that Content is made ready, uploaded. It was all very, all very, very difficult. Budgets, as we are concerned, yes, we had um, different revenue revenue budgets and the spendings. Everything had to be had to be restructured. Um, when I when I speak to a lot of my possible possible clients and people, every I, I know for a fact that everybody is too cautious. Everybody is trying to conserve cash right now and not trying to spend on marketing. So we are also. Um, Reducing our spends in whatever uh, whatever way we can, right? And we are trying to ensure that we just coexist. And a little bit optimistic optimism is there, and that's the reason we are trying to give a good content. And possibly, if we get decent GRPs, it would be a good start. Well, obviously, it is understandable right now. You know, uh, nobody has very clear answers to how things will pan out. But if we were to let's look at a you know, let's step back a little. I mean, I want to come to uh, uh, the reason why we've all gathered here today is to have a conversation about what is happening in the FTA ecosystem. And FTA ecosystem, as we all know, uh, you know, rides a lot on uh, the DD Friedish, uh, 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 you know, platform. Uh, I have some data uh, which was given to me and I'll just uh, quickly uh, go through data. So right now, the number of FTAs on DD is 104. Out of which there are nine entertainment channels. And after the last round of expansion that happened around the same time when Shimaru also launched, uh, we've had 11 new channels that have got added. I'm guessing some have uh, switched off from DD Freedish during COVID because they've not been in a position to pay monies. I'm also told that, uh, you know, since the news channels have been kind of lobbying with the government to provide a waiver, the government has given them, uh, I think, three uh, month deferred payment option with interest. So it might not add to help too much beyond a point. It's like banks telling us you can pay my money later, but you know, pay with compound interest. So in place of three EMIs, now you pay me five. So it really depends upon how deep anybody's pockets are. Uh, let's look at one of the larger, uh, you know, uh, fact of uh, what is happening in the FTA uh, uh, space. Now the FTA space, of course, has been very vibrant. What has happened from January 2019, it has fundamentally altered, primarily because the large networks, the large networks, the stars and Zs of the world pulled out from the DD Frisch Friedish ecosystem. And hence, independent players are now uh, basically running the entertainment television channels on uh, FTA. Uh, as we all know, the primary uh, uh, advertiser on FTA channels have been the FMCG players. My question to all of you, uh, and I'm sure Dabar has also advertised on FTS as much as any other FMCG player has. My question to all of you is that uh, given how the situation is currently and uh, a large number of uh, advertisers are in value seeking mode, right? Dabar might not be advertising right now, but I'm told other FMCG companies, some of them are advertising some categories and they're all in value seeking mode. Sorry. Right. If a large number of companies are in uh, value uh, seeking mode, 
does that put FTS at a at a advantage as compared to the regular pay television channels? Uh, uh, give and take, you know, content. As we all know, there is no fresh production of content happening, so everybody is running similar content. So, is anybody uh, willing to say that FTA would benefit from this situation at least in the short run? Will it uh, uh, create more adoption for FTA for advertisers? That's my question. So we can start with Rajiv. Why don't you? Take it up. Yeah. Uh, so Naval, uh, first of all, you know we are advertising. You know we uh, didn't go off air for a single day. We have, in fact, uh, been advertising uh, uh, entire month of April. We advertised month of May. Very good for us. We are doing lots of advertising. And as okay. everything is uh, as as uh, uh, you would have noticed that uh, there was a time that uh, when this COVID crisis started, uh, the TV viewership went up by about forty percent. The overall That's TV right. viewership. We were forty percent. Doordarshan added uh, uh, to the uh, uh, viewership by airing uh, Ramayan and uh, Mahabharat on uh, Didi Bharti. So that uh, that kind of changed the entire ecosystem. So whatever little money which could have gone to uh, these channels, these FTA channels, went to the original FTA of the country, which is Doordarshan. So Doordarshan is also an FTA channel, right? So That's right, absolutely. all the money, all the FTA money, uh, in a way, went to Doordarshan and uh, uh, it continues to do so. Uh, so after the uh, the first show got over, they started with the Shri Krishna. Shri, Shri Krishna has recently also done very well. Then Vishnu Puran on uh, Giri Bharti. So Correct. all this money has been going to uh, these uh, uh, programs which are performing very very well. Uh, then you look at Dangal, for example, Dangal. All the top four or top five programs which are there on right now, they are performing extremely. They are performing extremely well right now. Right. So, uh, so, so that's uh, so that is one part of the ecosystem which is Doordarshan plus Dangal, uh, plus add sub TV to it. So this is one one part of the ecosystem. Then second part of the ecosystem is the news, the free to air news channels which are which are there. So, so those also have uh, performed very well. So I'm sure. I mean, so, so a lot of money has moved to these uh, uh, options first. Then you know, uh, then Star Plus came and started uh, uh, with the telecast of of uh, Ramayan. Uh, then they had their own old uh, uh, the new version of Mahabharat running. So these two uh, will also garner something. But you know, largely what has happened is that because of this shift in viewership to do the show, you know, a lot of lot of uh, uh, viewers and hence the money uh, went to. Uh, These genres and the genres which are not performing, which are not giving any viewership, have uh, basically not been able to garner as much uh, viewership. Hmm. Uh, uh, so I will. I'm not including the the movie genre into this because movie genre has its own uh, uh, pluses and minuses. Uh, just looking at the GC, for example, so GC. This is what has happened. And then if you come to movie channels, then you know uh, the top uh, uh, four or five uh, movie channels they had a massive growth. And the rest of them uh, didn't have as much growth. So, so it's been a, it's, it's not a single. I mean, it's not a one-line answer which we can uh, use for this. There has been a shift of viewership, and let's face it, the shift of viewership has been in the place in favor of Doordarshan. And that's right. So, in fact, I just want to add to what yes, Rajiv has said. Uh, this is purely from a point of view of viewership, right? Uh, the entire piece of viewership which has increased on DD. and the perception that uh, ft normally runs reruns and or uh, repeats right so somewhere down the line what the viewership of ramayana and mahabharata has shown is that in case there is any content which is available even on fta or for that matter any other channel which has not been exposed to it will work the viewership will come so i guess that's the biggest learning for me specifically if you ask me uh, apart from that uh, when it comes to advertising uh, from client's point of view uh, when you looking at F- fts so i guess the starting point is uh, the markets which are in consideration right primarily fta viewership comes from whatever said and done rurals right and someone who's looking at urban specifically the viewership from urban markets of these fts go down a bit so i guess somewhere down the line that's a bit of a hindrance for the fta channels Yes, absolutely. So, in fact, when you look at, uh, for n- obvious reasons, if you look at the viewership of FTS on the, uh, you know, versus pay TV, right? Paid channels. Uh, 
their uh, their uh, viewership on uh, pay platforms obviously is much lesser primarily because people have so many other options especially the ones who subscribe to it jay what's your take on this is uh, you think fta adoption because you know people are seeing fta in a new light rajiv is right doordarshan has made a comeback but we all know you know they can't keep running mahabharat and ramayan you know reruns forever it's done once and it's over and the other ftas might be in a position to then take their position and fill in the holes and the point here is that a lot of audience as well as the uh, advertisers have have got this uh, you know idea in their head that hey you know reruns and uh, content that has uh, been exposed earlier does work with audience as long as it is good content so uh, so now i i think my my uh, sort of answer to this is that it's a combination of what rajiv and shrini are talking about so yes uh, this whole rama and mahabharat on doordarshan and all the old shows are working great uh, but it's a different scenario we are in a scenario where there is lot of time at hand and we are with with family lockdown so yes people are also watching whole lot of netflix and you know whole lot of uh, yeah. uh, tv which is one to one Uh, and then there is family viewing, and that's where Mahabharat Ramayan played a very big role. You know, that you could you could sit together and watch it, and you could watch it with your grandparents, parents, everything. Uh, in in the normal circumstances, when there is uh, original content on on the pay TV back, will we see this kind of viewership? I I I have my doubts on that. Uh, the second part is coming to the FTAs. Uh, see, the the reason one of the primary reason why FTAs has has worked is that. There is access to distribution. You know, there is a there is a guaranteed access to distribution into certain markets. So, which which is the biggest challenge when it comes to lot of lot of say pay TV because that is where they fight. You know, when when they uh, when you need viewers, you need great content and great distribution. Uh, FTA the distribution is in place. You know, once you are on on a free dish, you will reach out to the markets. That's right. Uh, and and probably the biggest learning at this point of time is that if you invest in great content. You know, up till now it has been that you know on 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 uh, FTAs the content perception for marketers is that it is it is not original, it is not great, it is reruns and all that. But if they can change that perception, you know, and say that no, we are all we are FTA, but we also provide quality content. Absolutely. I think that will be the game changer for them. So no, I think that's a very good point. I mean, if you if uh, if you uh, apart from delivering the numbers that you do on free dish if you can also change the perception to being a provider of quality content you have a you know good winner on hands yeah. so so i might add uh, sorry nice. go ahead i just word. i with you you complete okay okay so i just wanted to add uh, most of the points have already been said the way rajiv categorized the fta uh, i think was very interesting so you you know the 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 doordarshan the rest of ftas and the news so in my view uh i agree with uh, jay that these are very uncertain very different times and we should not make any benchmarks from what is happening at this point in time because uh, we are in absolutely unnatural conditions in my view the very fact that ramayan mahabharat also did well is because we are all in that state of uh, you know depression and 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 you know bhagwan yaad aate hain aise mein aur 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 that's obvious i mean indian mentality hoti hai yaar abhi kuch nahi hai to chalo ram naam japo types wo hai agar ye bahar agar koi aur situation hoti is samay aur aur ramayan mahabharat aate i am not too sure whether they would have seen the same kind of uh, even if we were at home right but since we were at home uh, with a fear of death, That's, that's why probably mythos uh, did a very good thing at this point in time and for right reason in and if you were to look at uh, going forward i think news there's never going to be any dearth of content content is going to be created on an ongoing basis so i'm not too worried about that but uh, dd i'm not too sure whether they'll be able to sustain this kind of viewership unless they try uh, uh, delivering new content because right now obviously all these uh, uh, shows that were uh, you know uh, i would say the gold standards of the yester years came out and everybody appreciated but what now now they have to have a very clear uh, strong content strategy going forward and the rest of ft is again uh, uh, unless the content is something which is at least comparable if not comparable at least in the same league as that of the pay uh, tv in the long run you would not be able to put that dollar on uh, you know when finally what will happen is that 1 rupee will have to be uh, uh, put behind that channel which gives you the best return on investment right and that's where the roi will come into play that's where the ratings will come into play that's where the cost per rating point and cost per reach will come into play so you know 
if if you were to look at it short term yes we have seen a, a very different environment but going forward it's going to be content that will decide whether fta will be able to gain a significant pie of this uh, 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 this this marketing or advertising spend going forward or not in fact i you know i have a slide which i want to put up i don't know whether i will be able to let me just try if i can uh, priyanka can you switch on my screen sharing uh, uh, while i do yes, that uh, yeah so uh, i have a slide which basically shows how fta's uh, have kind of managed to uh, keep their viewership uh, share intact uh, despite covid you know there is of course as we all know uh, a change in grps of uh, you know all the channels over the last 3 4 months pre covid post covid so there is a comparison we did for you know january versus april uh, for pay channels versus fta's and you know fta's as you can see are uh, uh, are uh, doing pretty well i'll try and put that up slide up once my screen sharing is switched on let me ask another question which is kind of partly related to this we all know that you know for the next 6 8 months there is going to be very big challenge in terms of organizing sports events right and naturally so and sports has been a very large driver of you know uh, uh, platform for uh, brands to ride on uh, let me ask you hema uh, since you manage a lot of categories that advertise on sports do you see uh, some of that money uh, 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 you know channelizing itself towards uh, entertainment uh, television and if so uh, how do you think uh this equation between free and fta channels will play out again uh, given the fact that this year is an unusual year a lot of clients are going to be uh into the value seeking mode significant value seeking mode so uh, just to sort of uh, address your first point which is on fta i agree with all the uh, points that were made by my friends here i definitely see this as a as a very temporary scenario it's a it's a matter of time it could be a month it could be three months uh please understand whether it's the increased viewership it's all a scarcity of uh, you know going out and lack of any other entertainment option that we have in our lives that's what leading to increased time on television and as rightly said i think mythos are in any case all time favorite classics and classics never go out of fashion so definitely people are watching and it's one of the safest uh, content to watch with the entire family together we've seen as much increase in ott consumption which is most of the times is not a content that you will watch with whether your kids or with your senior people so uh, uh, so that's what you know i somehow relate uh, ramayan and mathur the comeback to ludo i mean ludo has also come back you know so a lot of uh, nostalgia and the emotional uh, uh, you know uh, 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 journey that we all have gone through we we uh, i've seen a lot of people talking about the old times whether it's the clear environment whatever so people are connecting it with the old times and that's when i think the mythos came back and replayed their roles in our lives so that's how ludo is coming back and playing roles in their lives but it is all temporary come back to the you know the moment uh, uh, the the private producers or the private broadcasters will be in a situation to bring fresh content and we are back in the same situation i think life will come back to normal uh, but what clearly this proves is that content is the king irrespective of the platform so uh, this surely is an opportunity right now because fta if you get the right content on an fta platform it i think it it makes a lot of business sense for broadcasters so that's something which i think uh, now uh, is is something to think about for all broadcasters and uh, if dd could win that battle dd would have done it long back i don't think so dd can play the content battle uh, so that's my point of view on your first uh, point and coming to sports uh, uh, i think that money is gone to the bottom line <laughs> for all clients i don't think so uh, that money is coming back and this year you know whether i talk about large clients i mean as we, as i said you know whether it's coke or it's samsung or it's other uh, uh, auto clients uh, uh, we all had provision for two large sporting events in the country it was That's ipl right. of course and ipl we have seen with a double digit inflation from an investment standpoint and uh, also world cup so those two large investments it was the olympic also this year Yes, Olympic. Uh, see, from a media standpoint in India, I won't say Olympic is a very big thing. 
I don't think so. Uh, any advertiser, there will be very few advertisers who will think of a very, uh, you know, a, a, a big investment. They may explore, and as we increase, but I think the investments are never going to be big to impact the overall budgets. But the investment that we make behind cricket, okay, which runs in hundreds of crores, uh, so that that money surely is gone, and that money will not. come back uh, for couple of reasons why in any case there is going to be a drop in investments or the overall budgets that all clients will go through because uh, there is going to be whether if they are global clients there is going to be global diktat and how the business gets impacted uh, that will play a large role and secondly you know what uh, uh, what 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 sports especially cricket in india the premium that it charges or commands rather and the investment that it commands i don't think so any kind of content has ever commanded that and can justify that so even if you come back with any content which is fresh format whatever it will never justify the investment that uh, uh, cricket had so uh, this there's no way that you will get that money back in this year right uh, that's my point of view and uh, so the moment we are out of this we are back into our grp's game we are back into a bit of impact and a bit of uh, regular grp's game and yes uh, clients will seek value uh, definitely whether it's from a pricing standpoint looking at the market scenario or whether it's looking at you know uh, optimizing their plans from an efficiency standpoint and uh, there if of course fta plays a big role uh, and uh, you know whether uh, i think uh, shrini was making a point in whether it's rural india or it's urban india we were in fact making a plan for samsung and the client wanted us to explore ramayana and mahabharat so it's all about what the clients are watching it's not about uh, what about my consumer is watching if my consumer is happily watching a mahabharat and a ramayan they are okay they are very comfortable taking that so it's going to be all about viewership and we will chase viewership and that by default means that we will be chasing efficiencies in the coming times that's right So, so I think Sandeep, that's what I, that's what I was yeah. saying, Naval. Yeah, that a good, good content will work. Be it in free or paid, good content will work. It's not about the, everybody in this forum is correct that Mahabharat and Ramayana is working right now because of the family wing. But if your content is good, even in the change scenario, mm-hmm. right? And if, it, if the content has that pull, it will work. Definitely, Mahabharat and Ramayana cannot work uh, again. the way it has worked the way right now in the covid scenario but if it's good it it has to work you were asking me something novel novel sorry okay. i Andi, just want to yeah srinivas why don't you sorry. complete yeah, your yeah. so i just want to talk about the the question on sports right as to how exactly things are going to pan out now that the any sporting event is not happening so when it comes to advertising there are two kinds of uh, clients who advertise on sports who one who is wanting to do an association with it taking high ground the other one was only chasing viewership like him was talking about right so if someone is talking about viewership is chasing viewership obviously he will park those monies on other genres use that money and get the viewership by parking it on other genres but someone who is wanting to uh, chase association wanting to take high ground on it obviously uh, you take out the money he will put it as saving and maybe he will use part of it as uh, money which he would want to get viewership as well along with it because that's something which comes along with it as soon as you talk about association right so sandeep the point i want you uh, want uh, to pick up with you on is that one of the things that the panel has been saying is that fta channels depend a lot on reruns right yeah uh quality content is not invested into hence you know there is a certain scale a certain base at which fta's operate and obviously it's a vicious cycle you don't invest more you don't earn more unless you earn you don't invest and you know that goes on and on and especially now that you know the environment the advertise the larger advertising environment has turned so tough you know environment like this how do you uh, invest into you know fresh good quality content and sit back and say okay i will not you know look at a break even for say next 18 months and allow it to play out like that it's a very tough call for a broadcaster and uh, you know eventually everybody is as you know we've seen on uh, free dish everybody is uh, down to running uh, reruns or uh, content that we played earlier so novel i think uh, the premise is that you have to have good content right even if it is rerun right any any broadcaster is not running a content just for the sake of showing it to the viewers right definitely there has to be an roi so the content that anybody picks up is with the perspective that this content even if it is rerun content 
will have adequate eyeballs to give the required viewership right uh, so in in even if even if in our, even in our planning uh, in maru tv that we had done we had picked up content not with the perspective that covid will come the content was picked up with a mix which will be adequately required for the swedish audience and also the audience base which which would need to which actually is happy to see the second rank of gc so uh, as far as your question is concerned towards uh, is the redone content a content to save on cost no it is a cost it is a cost uh, what how should i uh, phrase it it is a it is based on the roi that one can justify definitely if i if i add, if i invest in a very heavy content and my distribution is not commensurate to that kind of that kind of content because discoverability is also a challenge right so all the fta channels who are currently in free dish fta doesn't just specifically mean the means the free dish free dish channels only fta channels are non pay channels right so the non pay channels have a limited uh, advantage or have a restriction of being uh, put not on the uh, premium lcns right since you're not on the premium lcns your discoverability is seriously severely affected so since your discoverability is severely affected either you have to market your product right which again is a significant cost other than the content cost so we have to balance the cost of content so that the roi is justified in whatever we are claiming for that what you are saying correctly saying that okay the investment and the return in the in the er is accordingly different from what the pay channels are so right right and uh, one thing that i think in the initial discussion we were saying that uh, 54 channels are there in the mpeg 4 uh, 104 is the total number of frequency so in the mpeg 4 the auctions were 53 channels which had come not 104 that i just wanted to correct and the existing petition by all the channels to the prasad bharti is that you reduce the fees that we had auction for because that auction was not uh, thought of with or were perceived that a covid situation will come and the entire revenue will dry off so if that happens a lot of the channels which had to withdraw will may not have to withdraw so so novel that's correct rajiv there is yeah. uh, a a lighter question online i'll just read it to you what was the idea behind bringing old tvc back for hajmola i think uh, uh, doordarshan uh, started with the nostalgia trip you know and they got the old uh, series back and people started talking about good old days of 1980s and and stuff uh, so we uh, not only hajmola in fact uh, uh, we are running hajmola lal dhan panjan and uh, old town prash films so these three films we are running currently in and fact they, uh, our client amul is also running all old films on uh, right. well, yeah. I, i showed it to my kids that day you know the amul girl uh, yeah, yeah. you know it's 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 amul doodh peeta hai india yeah. is like yeah. the 90s commercial rajiv i don't know uh, whether i can ask you this question or whether you are you know publicly comfortable sharing this so if we were, we were to index it to last year say april you know if you had spent last year in april what would be the hit for a company like you know dabar in terms of how much you've invested uh, in advertising spend so you know so april was a very different month you know like really right. so like uh, so everybody was hit uh, in a big way so uh, uh, and uh, and things are not normal i mean uh, uh, the the supply the production everything was uh, very abnormal so similarly the uh, spend was also abnormally low right, not yeah. uh, not zero uh, like one tends to think but you know we it was pretty low but you know we uh, moved uh, a lot of monies to the news uh, genre because that's what we felt uh. middle of march we felt that you know a lot of people are going to watch news and the data came in that favor so uh, so so if so you look at news genre abnormally high okay if you look at gcs uh, abnormally low because uh, the viewership all vanished if you look at doordarshan abnormally high this is not is not a one uh, simple answer because a lot of viewership vanished although there was a 40% uh, uh, increase in viewership but all this viewership was in favor of uh, the news channels uh, uh, the doordarshan and uh, right. and the movie channels so so that's how so it, so that's the index you know i mean uh, kind of uh, copied uh, so may, may would be better i mean if we were to look at may would you be would you be say at 50% of may last year in this month all combined 
I would say I would say it'd be more than that. Uh, okay. More than that. So that's good. I know that Amul is spending a lot. I I I am privy to some conversations, and I know that you know they've uh, they've not let it slip. So at least there are some uh, clients across categories who continue to spend, and we are hoping that Dabur also yes, know, comes back to spending the earlier amounts very soon. This is the screen I was uh, you know uh, uh, trying to uh, put up. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this. This is uh, this is some data. Is it visible to you? Yeah. Yes. Right. So this is some uh, uh, viewership data of FTA channels uh, in comparison to the top GCs, and this data is across uh, pay and free uh, platforms both. And as you can see, the GRPs for uh, uh, the pay channels are stacked on uh, one side, and there are uh, the FTA channels. We have taken two in this case. Entertainment uh, DD is not part of this because in Jan DD numbers would have been significantly lower because they did not have these reruns. There was no lockdown. So if you look at the private uh, FTAs as well as the private uh, uh, entertainment channels, the FTAs compare very very favorably. The I think the 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 issue uh, the other issue that this brings me to is that what happens to uh, you know advertising rates on FTAs. uh since uh, many of you are regular users of you know uh, fpa as uh, advertising platforms uh our audience is not equal obviously the assumption here is dd free dish audience is not uh, similar in terms of uh, paying capability as uh, uh, you say a tata sky audience is uh, but if you were to look at things as they stand today is there a you know massive difference is that uh, something uh that uh, gets you to pay significant amount of premium for a tata sky audience or significant lesser to the ftas that uh, that are on uh, free dish or do you want to take that uh, yeah rajiv why don't you so um so since the beginning if you remember the, when these uh, uh, free to air channels came on uh, free dish you know uh the construct of uh, selling was such that you know it started coming cheap and uh, they started uh, selling it on the basis of uh, cprp and uh, because the the viewership was not very consistent the programs were repeat uh, programs so so obviously the uh, original program has a different uh, rate to it and the, the repeat program has a different rate to it so in terms of uh, uh, so that was i think the equation which basically went on you know and uh, uh, if you look at if you just look at eyeball to eyeball i think uh, in terms of grps in terms of uh, numbers they would be giving the same numbers but you know uh, yes rates wise there was always uh, been a difference right from the beginning but you know if you if you do the same mathematics on say news genre you know yes on the news genre and if you if you compare a fta news channel versus a non fta news channel that difference is not so, so significant you know so this is something which uh, the gcs have done, done to themselves and the movie fta movies have done to by pulling out primarily they pulled out by by, by being uh, not not very consistent not showing the same programming uh, consistently not showing original programming to the fta audiences so uh, you know in a way i would uh, don't, don't want to sound too harsh but you know if the the tv networks themselves have treated their fta channels as their step child not as a as somebody who can you know earn the bread for themselves you know so they are also at fault uh, the way they have treated uh, do you share that sentiment hema yeah uh, i agree with rajiv uh, i think all large broadcasters private broadcasters who happily vacated that space when they had to pay extra to uh, to get the license last year they pulled out and uh, at least i think in open nobody has admitted any regrets uh, but uh, surely i think it's a big big revenue loss to most of them because uh, for that kind of a distribution fee uh, that's the eyeballs you garner and but they have definitely treated because you know uh, and that's where you know you you established i mean at most a lot of the time as a buyer i will tell broadcasters that you dig your own graves you set benchmarks and unfortunately you start to follow that and that becomes market norms so that what happened with fta is because the content is not fresh okay they they sold it at a certain price and if cprp becomes a norm for those with increased viewership uh, there is a price hike which which you know which in a way is legitimate because you 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 were doing a cprp deal 
but obviously there is a market push not to give increase in rates so that's a fight because the gap between the operating cprps of the regular pay chapay channels versus these channels have been so so uh, you know vast it's it's i mean it's tough to bridge that gap actually and uh, that is what is led to current situation uh but now your question was i think uh, on the current pricing on uh, right. with this ha huh? so uh, 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 see uh, largely if i see there are two key contributors of the growth that one has seen is fta one is of course dd and the other is news okay so uh, at least i personally dd i mean dd comes with a rate card and dd uh, so uh, there is i mean you cannot compare dd with anything i mean it's it's there that can you have to are you so happy somebody runs with a rate card and doesn't go back and yeah, forth yeah i'm happy time. i mean i personally many yeah. times i just say that i wish market operates on rate card i mean our life will be so much sorted and oh, well, well uh, i think the media broadcasters will be very happy if we all operated on rate card <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Some of us won't have jobs. Ah, <laughs> 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 um, uh, maybe we'll have better jobs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, so DD, of course, and on news channels, at least I have not uh, seen that uh, you know there was any kind of a rate hike that they've asked for because of this. uh but yes what the softness that you see in the market in other genres is much more than what you see in news see what you have to understand that market is overall soft so while news channel may be gaining on viewership there are lesser advertisers to advertise and okay. as far as the categories which are advertising which are primarily fmcgs and packaged goods which uh, are not one of the biggest drivers or biggest advertisers or categories on news channels per se yes so their categories as technology auto men's client mobile they were all zero practically zero from end of march till the whole of april so they, it's a perishable commodity so uh, you know there is no way that they could have think of a price hike even when the viewership was supporting them because there weren't enough takers in the market yes in fact you know uh, if you see oh. i have this another slide given to me by lv i mean this shows blood bath so this is indexed to february 2020 the month before lockdown uh uh and look at march and april march still kind of was okay because the lockdown really hit us towards the third or fourth week look at april it the bottom is just come off uh, print down from 73 to 11 digital down from 111 to 82 uh, the least hit so to say uh radio uh, again 50% more than 50% down 105 down to 30 television 104 down to 56 and uh, the the uh, the final picture in this is that this is only averages so obviously there are a lot of uh, platforms lot of media companies which are hit much harder than the average some of them have seen uh, revenue shrinking by 80% uh and since uh, Uh, almost all of that money flows through uh, agencies agencies have taken a similar hit because you know all of the money is flowing through uh, uh, the media agencies so uh, let's hope that you know all of this picks up uh, uh, from june onwards and uh, once the lockdown is eased uh, we are in a better situation uh, uh, now I, uh, yeah go ahead i just i just want to check that the perception that fta audience is that we are talking about fta doesn't specifically mean dd british i That's i right. just uh, in the in the discussion it predominantly is appearing it's only dd british but it have fta it's just predominantly not british fta is the larger base yes. where you are not a free dd british is just a free to air platform yes and fta is a channel where you are not asking subscription from the uh, subscribers and it is you are you are taking all is only ad revenues rajiv you want to add something i just i just want to add something to it you know so yeah. uh, interestingly this fta phenomena is only limited to the hsm market you know the moment you go to down south and very very hsm and very very rural you know the moment you look at only urban then you know uh, the numbers then 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 the game is very different And if you look at south, the game is completely different. Then you know uh, there is uh, absolutely no FTA in that uh, market. So when we talk about FTA, by definition, is only uh, HSM market, and for the brands which are uh, very very rural centric, you know, 
brands like ours and uh, most of the FMCG brands. And like I mentioned uh, in the slides, there is obviously Dangal and Big Magic are two yes. nice examples of FT. I think the Doordarshan conversation is right now relevant primarily because their viewership has really gone through the roof. I don't think they would have seen such a jump in, you know, after maybe the original Mahavarat and Ramayan were aired. You know when yeah, so, some so of you will remember uh, they used to be they used to be getting hundred GRPs uh, or you know all GRPs available because they were monopoly broadcaster and everybody was watching Doordarshan. Because that's that's how that's how that's how the FTA or the FTA channels are creating a differentiator. Maybe because if it, it was only Free Dish, which is a forced viewing platform, because they have very limited access to content, right? There you it's like right now. We are forced to see Ramayan Mahabharat as one of the best premium products, right? Uh, so every free dish operator has to create uh, has to create content. That's how Dangal has upped the game. They have started creating content, not just because it's DD free dish. It's, it's the other other platforms as well, and so so is any other launches. That's what we have also done. So I was just confused that FTMA sub SNE. Everybody not should think it's only DD free dish. That's right. That's right. Rajiv, there's yeah, another question for you. Question. I want to ask a question. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Rajiv. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, it's been uh, about 20 years that you know one never saw a rating of uh, 13, 14, 15 for a show after Kyoki Saas and uh, KBC. Uh, do Darshan imagine for one full month, they got a rating of about 10 plus ratings for the show. Can you imagine uh, this kind of scenario if the show like Ramayan Mahabharat was on say any other channel, it would have got this kind of rating. I don't think so. I mean, it was the sheer numbers because Doordarshan right. is present in hundred percent of the households, whereas other channels are not present in hundred percent of the households. You know, they're like just about 30, 40, 50, maybe 60 percent households. So uh, this kind of rating, I mean, was unimaginable what you got. True. So the vision, the, the opportunity to see for Doordarshan was already there. And it was very well, very well informed that to the every audience that it is it is available at that this frequency. A lot of lot of people in the initial days just wanted to know where is Durdashan available and what frequency in Dada Sky or what frequency in this distributor. As soon as they come to know, they just switch into it. So that's the advantage of. Ask Durdashan one last question or FTA. Do you think uh, in the current uh, environment, uh, say over the next three four quarters? Is the FTA ecosystem pricing going to put a lot of pressure on the on the uh, mainline GECs? Uh, Naval, what you're trying to say is that uh, is is uh, what what FTA will price their product uh, accordingly. The other networks will come down. Is it going the, to put pressure on the other networks FTA pricing, especially for you know categories like FMCG? No, definitely. I, I think uh, like we we have seen with the advent of Dangal. So with, with Dangal coming and uh, it's it, it garnering certain amount of viewers. Also, it will also depend on which categories we are talking about within the FMCG. Uh, brands which are which are more rural centric and trying to focus on those areas. Definitely FTA can play a big role. My the, what what and I think uh, Sandeep has been trying to put that point across that FTA is not only free dish. FTA is actually a La Doordarshan. It's, it's basically if they can sort of garner that viewership on the pay TV homes, okay, they, they have a killing to make. The, the problem is that the moment you split the viewership and you look at the, the FTA channels in uh, the pay TV homes, that's where the difference starts coming in. And we know that the pay TV guys are the guys who consume it every day. So yeah. the, I, the, the pressure will build if they can get a share out of the pay TV uh, homes. So yes. if I put a cut across that and under the pay TV, if the FT and I'm not talking about the news, I'm generally talking about the GEC channel. If they can do that, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll make a huge difference. That's where the real game will start happening. I guess that's where the larger networks or at least the, the players who have deeper pockets will come into the play. Yes. So obviously the important important thing is Sandeep, you guys have launched an FTA and I'm sure that's on your radar to not just oh, have much. audience on the, you know, DD free dish platform, but also on, you know, pay platforms, because if you can crash so that the market, content strategy is very much novel, the content strategy is devised like that. It can't be just focused on DD free dish. We have to ensure that we, we capture the larger, 
the larger uh, pie of hsr if you only if you only look for dd fridish it was a much simpler game to play with fantastic okay so before we uh, wrap this up it's uh, our time is i am told uh, there's another question for rajiv which is very relevant to actually a lot of uh, other advertisers uh, which is that you know summers have been a little cooler this time right uh, partly maybe there's lesser pollution vehicular you know commercial air conditioning and so on how does it impact your beverage category rajiv and what happens to all of us if kind of people are not drinking more soft drinks and colas and juices and so beverage category is uh, definitely uh, uh, been hit uh, badly this summer uh, for multiple reasons you know uh, so one is our modern trade is uh, deeply affected uh, because of yes uh, this crisis so that's that's one of the reasons uh, uh, but i mean beverages as such i mean i can tell you that uh, there's a huge stress in that uh, segment right now i hope that it it covers up in the coming months but uh, uh, whatever has been lost is lost you know uh, that's correct yeah last uh, few weeks uh, last two, four five weeks rather fantastic so what is the final message i mean there are lots of people who are right now anxious you know uh, as rajiv started this discussion rightly by saying dabar's current priority is to save livelihood livelihoods and you know a lot of people in the advertising ecosystem a lot of people in the media uh, ecosystem are you know naturally very worried and concerned about what happens to their you know uh, incomes and their jobs and you know their careers over the next 12 18 24 months so what is one message of hope each one of you wants to give to people who uh, who are you know watching this conversation sandeep we can start with you so i think india is a economy which is at least 80% of our consumption is at home right so as soon as things get started i'm pretty sure by as i think a uh, lot of us are aware that are also accepting that by mm-hmm. september we should be reviving back the economy and things should get, start getting normal by november kind i think so am i am i am i correct rajiv mohit jay is that too much of an optimism i think uh, shrinivas <laughs> i think you know uh, one has to take one day at a time you know yeah absolutely if this crisis extends for longer period i mean one yeah. is not but uh, uh, how about we are expecting good monsoon uh, yeah. it's just that we just have to get away with covid fast that's it yeah so i think i think one thing which is uh, which is going to get affected or is getting affected uh, is 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 travel tourism and services you know they, those those uh, services are uh, going to get affected a lot that's right yes more than any other categories you know uh so you know i think some categories will see a very quick revival some categories might see a very re- late revival but you know uh but i i mean i hope that everything comes back to normal and you know everybody uh, uh does good, good business and uh, laughs its way to the bank eventually you know so so that's that's what one wants but you know uh, things are going to be very different one has to be prepared for the uh, new scenario one has to look at new opportunities uh, because in this kind of despair, this kind of uh, distress there are a lot of opportunities coming up so one has to look at opportunities within this uh, distress and and go ahead uh, yeah so i i personally feel this is not a year of growth it's a year of survival right, right? right. as jack ma said uh, uh, and i think we all agree with it if you have survived this year Uh, as at a, at a personal level, at a professional level, at a business level, that itself would uh, mean that you have made huge profits in the long term. So, as 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 business owners, as client, pa, pa, you know, partners, we should ensure that we survive this year, uh, and 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 ensure our our businesses are kept afloat. Because I don't want to predict that Q three is going, Q four is going to be good because things can change. If things could change in three days' time. you know it can change in another 3 days time you know you never know god forbid if uh, if the cases go up suddenly and there might be a second lockdown that happens you don't know what's going to happen and how things are going to change so it's all about staying afloat surviving and 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 planning for next year so we are already planning for 2021 yes jay 
I'm I'm pretty optimistic. Uh, so yes, these are these are tough times and uh, these are these are very challenging uh, period and we we need to be really agile. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I I I I think uh, if if like by June if we see the lockdown easing out, uh, I think we should be back to normal by September. Uh, yes, there will be certain categories like travel and all that which will get affected uh, quite a lot. Travel, leisure, and all that. Uh, but there will be other categories which will bounce uh, uh, in in this period because in every crisis there is an opportunity for someone, and you you might see like say the insurance categories and and the essentials and all that uh, might have a good bounce. Uh, one point which I want to tell you all and which I want to say that you you heard it here first is that sports is going to be back. So uh, I, I I won't be surprised if in September you see an IPL. And you see an India series in the month of October, November. So especially if, if say, a vaccine or some drug is found sometime soon, then obviously stadiums. Even even without the vaccine, Naval, uh, I I think BCCI is 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 very opportunistic. And uh, given that uh, uh, there are there are there are certain challenges where a lot of entertainment networks are not going to invest on impact shows, uh, this is a very big opportunity for BCCI with the World Cup getting postponed. Uh, I won't be surprised if they even play on empty stadiums. Uh, they get the Indian players to play. Uh, they might do a tour to one or two countries or something, and uh, you'll you'll see cricket coming back. So uh, there are there are things which are going to like you know like the way I think Mohit was saying that you know depression therefore led to Ramayan Mahabharat viewing going up. Uh, sports might bring back that optimism. You know you see IPL and all that happening. You'll see. A bit of optimism also coming back. So I I I I I've already I, seen that in football. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, there was a, a new on, a report on BBC yesterday. Germany is start, starting soccer behind yeah. the, without fans in the stadium. So yes, at least there will be advertisers on TV if not fans in the stadium. True. True. I think what BCC will have to gauge just to respond to Jay's point. Uh, I agree. BCC is very optimistic. What they will have to ensure. to gauge the market sentiment and the advertiser readiness to invest in the market because it's a big investment Absolutely. and uh, if there are no takers then to uh, put in such an event may also be a risk thing for them so yes if they sense that there is an opportunity in the market and there are enough takers uh, that's that's a way forward probably that's right good srini last word uh, so i guess we need to be cautiously cautiously optimistic i mean what i would personally think is that we've already seen the lowest right it can't get worse than this so the only way up for it is up going up so i mean that's the way i look at it there would be opportunities we just need to be agile like uh, jay said uh, at the same time there could be opportunities from a couple of categories where we currently are thinking that they might just they might not come back anytime soon so it's all about thinking on thinking on your toes and be agile i think we'll go up pretty soon that's a way to look at it from my side fantastic i am i for one recovery uh, it might sound more hopeful than uh, most people uh, but i think as you all uh, mentioned a lot of categories will pick up pick up very fast and the harsh or the hard reality is uh, unfortunately this is a disease we'll have to live with for some time take adequate precautions uh, you know uh while the disease spread happens some parts of the economy will open up like it has already happened in some parts of north india start happening in other parts of the country and you know things will uh, we'll have to learn to live with it for some time with that thank you so much uh, we are way past our closing time so thank you so much for joining this uh, panel thank you first of all to uh, the shimaru team for uh, you know being part of this thank you sandeep and all the best to you guys for your new fta thank you so thank much you thank you so much everyone free to air channel thank you mohit for uh, joining this panel i hope we meet in person sometime soon you're able to take your next flight very 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 soon jay thank you i hope you're back in delhi uh, shortly rajiv thank you for uh, very good insights i hope the uh, the sales pick up uh, pretty well next month and uh, some sucker some more sucker comes the way of the advertising and the media ecosystem thank you shrini uh, thank you hema thank you for being part of this conversation until next time thank you all of you goodbye